Hi, it's the Coin Housewife, and today I am going to be making my meatloaf with the works. And <laughs> I call it meatloaf with the works because, as you can see, we're going to put diced bell pepper, carrot, onion, and olive in here. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have about half of a diced green pepper here. I'm going to stick that in. Okay, this is a half of a small carrot diced up. Now I dice these in a food processor, but you can actually go ahead and do it by hand. I only diced it up because, um, you know, it's a finer cut, but I actually prefer working by hand. I hate using machines. Okay, we're almost done there. Now, we're going to go ahead and put this diced large onion in. You can tell this is going to take, um, this is actually going to be a big meal if you can tell. This is about 10 sliced olives and they're going to give off a really um, tangy flavor to the meatloaf. You just go ahead and spread the rest of whatever you have off of this into your bowl. And if I didn't say it already, this was two pounds of beef. Now, we're going to go ahead and start with our herbs and spices. Okay, first thing is garlic powder. I am going to put a tablespoon of garlic powder. I'm going to just go ahead and wash off my tablespoon real quick. Now you might think that's a lot of garlic powder, a whole tablespoon, and it is. It's just, you know, when you're using plain meat, you have to use a lot of um, herbs and spices, you know, if you, if you like rich flavor. So that's a tablespoon of garlic powder. Next, we're going to do a tablespoon of oregano. I am crazy, crazy, crazy about herbs. Okay, that's gonna, going to come out to about a tablespoon. of dill weed. Dill weed gives off a nice gentle flavor. Okay, that's a half a teaspoon. I'm going to do just a few sprinkles of crushed red pepper. You know, if you've never had this before, it um, it is very popular in pizza restaurants. They'll have it next to the grated Parmesan cheese. Okay, there we go. That's enough. That's that's gonna give it a nice bite. Cilantro. Cilantro is excellent. I'm probably gonna give about a quarter of a teaspoon for this. Cilantro. Okay. A quarter of a teaspoon of cilantro. Wow, that smells really good. For basil, I am going to use a half a teaspoon of basil. I can't wait to eat this tonight. Paprika. Paprika, we are going to use about a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Actually, let's make that a half a teaspoon of paprika. All right. Okay. Now we're going to, in addition, we're going to make this a cheesy meatloaf. Now, if you've seen a lot of 
uh, recipes for cheesy meatloaf, they put the cheese in the center of the meatloaf, but I don't do that. I, I put shredded cheese throughout the meatloaf because it makes it nice and moist and you can actually taste the cheese everywhere instead of having you know, the cheese just in the center. So we are going to go ahead and put some cheese in here. You can do any kind of cheese really, but the most flavorful kind. If you want a mild flavor, you can do mozzarella, something like that. I have a combination of leftover Mexican style blend cheese and sharp cheddar. So I'm just going to go ahead and use them up. This is a one cup measuring cup. that one is done so you got about so far I've got a quarter cup of Mexican cheese and the rest is going to sharp cheese I end up having a lot of leftover shredded cheese bags in the house because I just for some reason don't um, use them all up and it's good for this kind of thing. So this is about two thirds of a cup of shredded cheese. Again, you really can use any kind, but if you use a stronger flavor uh, cheese like sharp cheddar, it's going to flavor up your meatloaf very nicely. Okay, now we are going to uh, put the, actually, let, Let's put these breadcrumbs in here. This is two cups of freshly grated breadcrumbs. You don't have to freshly grate them. Of course you can get them from that container, you know, the cardboard container of breadcrumbs. I only shredded them because, um, I actually shredded them with a manual shredder. I only did that because I had these stale wheat rolls. We weren't gonna do it for anything else. They're beyond redemption for eating as a sandwich, so I, I did this. Now, if you don't have breadcrumbs on hand, you can actually use any kind of, almost any kind of carbohydrate. Like you can use uh, rice, like cooked rice. You can use um, oats, you know, like a Quaker oats. You can use um, cereal flakes, you know, like if you have bran flakes. You can use cracker crumbs, which my husband likes to use. Um, you really, there's a lot of variety, so never fear if you're out of a lot of, you know, breadcrumbs. You can go ahead and just find something else in your kitchen <laughs> to put in there. There we go. Okay, this is looking great. Now, I'm just going to make a little hole in the center here. little hole in the center and I'm going to put the eggs in really quickly in here okay I'm going to use two these are large eggs beat the eggs you know you're supposed to have beaten eggs when you put it in I just take the spoon or fork and just go like this a little bit and next you know is really what I call the not fun work which is mixing all this around and to do that what do we have to do we have to take off the wedding rings and the engagement ring I don't like to actually use <laughs> that when I'm cooking or washing dishes and I forgot to take them off and before we do that you know we're just going to uh, put a little bit of salt in here and then we'll mix to put a uh, teaspoon of it in there it's half a teaspoon There 
there's a teaspoon. All done. Now we're going to start shredding this up. Or not shredding, mixing this up. I mean, this is really quite flavorful looking. I mean, there's, it's like a bowl of confetti. I mean, you got red and green and orange and white. So I'm gonna go get in here with my hands and when it's all mixed up, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, now I am ready to take the meatloaf and put it into this nice, clear dish pan that I sprayed with some butter-flavored cooking spray. So, here we go. Oh, I'm telling you, we are just going to love this tonight, and in we go, nice and easy. Now, you know, when we put things in the oven, you notice, some things don't cook up as quickly in the middle as they do on the outside. And for that, what I do is I leave a little hole in the center of my meatloaf because um, that is where the heat, you know, gets to the least. And that's going to kind of fill up again with... Um, you know, the juices of the meatloaf and everything, so it's not going to be totally empty. Now, as you can see, it just looks delicious. And we are going to uh, put this in the oven at 375 for about an hour. Um, you should probably check on it. Some ovens are more efficient than others. 375. Uh, for an hour. I'll probably check it in the meantime. So I will see you again after this is done. All right, well, we got our delicious meatloaf out of the oven. And what I'm going to do is just add three quarters of a cup of ketchup to the top. Now there are variations to this. You can put tomato sauce uh, or ketchup or gravy. I mean, you can get, make it easy and get canned gravy. Um, or, you know, a can of tomato sauce, whatever you and your family prefer. And it just, my husband happens to like ketchup a lot. So, uh, what I do is I just warm this back in the oven for about, about 15 minutes, okay? And then the reason I don't bake it with ketchup is because sometimes I find that the ketchup seeps into um, the meatloaf and it makes it more watery for some reason. That's been my experience. So this is my deluxe meatloaf and I really hope that you like this and that your family likes this. See you again soon. Bye.